You are, are you in Spain right now? Yes, I'm in Madrid. In Madrid, lovely. All right, we are live. Hello, everybody. We're going to allow for just a minute or so for everybody to filter in so no one misses any of this great content. But I just want to welcome everybody. In case you uh, don't know where you are, you are signed up for a Pro Writing Aid webinar with Chris Banks, the CEO and founder of Pro Writing Aid, which is a really incredible self-editing tool to help you, no matter what you're writing, books, blogs, articles, recipes, whatever you, whatever you are writing. If you need some help with your grammar technique and oh so much more, which we are going to get into um, in there. So right now everybody has just jumped in and is saying hello. I'm really excited to see the international crowd that we have here. We've got all over the United States. We have England. We have Brazil. We have Canada. This is cool. I'm super excited that we've got such an international crowd. Ohio, South Africa. Hey, Nancy, my assistant is here. How are you doing this? This I guess it's afternoon now, Chris, for you, huh? Yep, it's 4 p.m. here. So I'm in Spain. That's cool. I would I would love to be in Spain right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, in the interest of everyone's time, it is 10.01, so we will just uh, allow people to hop on in. Please note, I have a question in the uh, poll area. If you're new to Webinar Jam there, or Webinar Ninja, excuse me, uh, there is a poll area. We have a poll up. Please go answer that. I may pop some new ones up there throughout. Um, throughout the webinar. And there's also a place where you can add questions. So please feel free to add those questions and I will read them. Um, Chris, unfortunately, left his glasses in a taxi. And so I will read everything to him out loud. If you have questions, you can also put them in the comments. Okay. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with me, I'm Alexa Bigwarf. Most of you, I believe, um, came to know me through the Women in Publishing Summit, which Pro Writing Aid was one of our major sponsors. Thank you very much for that. We appreciated it greatly. Um, okay. and they, yeah, you guys, your team, Lisa, is just incredible to work with. I love your tool. Um, I don't remember how I found out about Pro Writing Aid to be quite honest with you, but I remember checking it out as soon as I heard about it, getting the free license and um, messing around with it. And what I really, really liked about it, well, we'll get into the um, into a screen share and you can show us some of the tools, but I really liked some of the really simple tools, like showing me how many times I used the same word over and over, giving me ideas for new word suggestions, um, just the grammatical stuff that I'm not as comfortable with. And, um, you know, as for, for those of you who are writing a book, especially, um, you want to make sure that your writing is fresh and good and nobody wants to read a book that has but anyway, written 72 times, you know, and things like that. Uh, very so, true. Yeah. So how, well, you know what, I'm going to read your bio so that everybody knows a little bit more for you and then we'll, and then we'll get into it. So Chris has a passion for technology and metaphors in his varied career. He's built neural networks to model language learning, worked on BBC's script writing product, written books, <laughs> which he says are too boring to mention, but he's also been a ski guide. He gives talks on creativity, artificial intelligence, and language technologies. So you're one of those wild blends that is both left brain and right brain, I guess, huh? <laughs> Uh, I guess so. I've had a very varied career, and uh, I think that's what's culminated in pro writing aid. And it's it's interesting looking back because I don't think that any part of it could be taken away, and I would be in the same situation. So, right. uniquely positioned, hopefully. Yeah, that's really cool. So you started pro writing aid in your bio. It says to help you with your own writing, but you soon saw how useful it was for everyone else. And um, and and well, let's just talk about it. So how did it how did it come about? Well, it, it was actually because I was changing style of writing and changing my interest in writing. So previously, I'd written a lot of business writing. Um, so a lot of kind of uh, research pieces, a lot of um, specifications, um, that kind of thing. Um, and so I was quite adept at writing, but in that field. Uh -huh. um, and then I got interested in creative writing uh, and I started writing a novel. 
and uh, then I realized that I wasn't very good at it. <laughs> uh, and that actually, you know, basically writing in a, in a different style is almost akin to writing in a different language. Um, you know, the, the things that you use, the phrases that you use, the, the whole style is very, very different. Um, so I kind of started looking around to see what I could find to help me and doing some research. And uh, you know, I was very involved in technology at the time. And so I just thought, well, actually, I can start building something here to help me with my writing. Um, so it was very sort of personal upfront. Um, uh, and then it started getting a lot of traction. Um, you know, it was really interesting at the, the start. We had some great supporters and, um, you know, I, I didn't really start it as a business. I started it just as something to help other people. Um, and it's kind of grown and grown from there, really. Um, and it's a, a very exciting journey, uh, but I think we've we've still got a long way to go. There's a lot more that we want to do with the product. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I know. So, as a writing coach through my business, write, publish, sell, writing and publishing coach. Like, I mean, it, it, a lot of first time authors will come in and they have this manuscript that they've worked so hard on, but they may not be so familiar with with what's. Uh, industry standards or what, you know, flows well, or it's kind of like watching somebody try out for like American Idol or something like that. Like they've been mm. told their whole life, they're a really good writer. And then they put their book in front of people and it can get torn to shreds. So I like the idea of a self editing tool um, to help people kind of refine their writing and, and, and figure out some of those mistakes that they're making before they send it to an editor and get mark, you know, red marks all over their page. So, you know, but there are a lot of people I'm surprised to learn that don't do self editing, that they do their own draft and they do like, okay, don't do like official self editing. They'll revise and they'll revise and they'll revise and they go through it, but they may not really know and understand some of the grammatical errors that they're making, some of the other issues that are coming up, some of the just like really like more detailed than what I know about grammar, which is why I use both self-editing tool and an editor, <laughs> but those things that are coming up and up. So um, what would you say that it is a simple enough tool to be used by a very beginning writer, but also an enhanced enough tool to be used by someone who's as good of a writer as like an editor per se, as if you will. Yeah, I, I think exactly. I mean, the tool is designed to to be able to be used at different levels, right? So you can use it just for a very simple, you know, I'm writing an email and I just want some quick fixes uh, or I'm, you know, writing a blog piece and I don't have much time. I just want to, you know, make 10 changes that are going to improve it and then I'm going to put it out. Or, right. you know, you can go for the, I've got, you know, 15 weeks to improve my novel and I'm going to go through every chapter and I'm going to go in depth and I'm going to run all of the reports uh, <laughs> and I'm really going to dig deep into it. And you can work really at either level. Um, and obviously different people use it for in different ways. You know, so right. we do have professional editors who are using it, you know, just as a kind of double check so that they can focus on the more important things. Um, you know, so they can look at things that only humans could look at like tone of voice, characterization, that kind of stuff, um, and not waste time on correcting small grammar mistakes, um, you know, not waste their, their client's money. Um, and it, at the same time, we have, as you mentioned, beginner writers who are using the tool, um, who are using it to learn, right? And we really very much see the tool as uh, an educational tool. You know, by using the product, um, you should be learning. Um, and you should be improving. And in fact, you know, over time, you you may come to rely on it less and less. Um, yeah, but it's there to keep reminding you. I mean, I always think of it uh, as like my tennis coach. You know, he most of the time he just stands there and tells me to like hit the ball higher with more spin, and I still forget to do it. Right. But he's still there telling me over and over again. Um, you know, and it's the program is supposed to be that kind of friendly coach that's there to call you out on the things that. You need you keep doing wrong um, to question you to and in general to form like a positive feedback loop with you you know to ask you the questions and you to answer them say actually I know you know it's fine to say actually I like the way I've written that so I'm going to ignore you you know but equally well you might say oh I didn't think of that oh, that's actually quite a good point oh, I'm going to change that 
Um, yeah. Well, that's, that's great. I mean, I love it. I am not um, a grammar like expert by any means. And I just really, I find that it helps. I wish I'd had this tool when I was like in high school and we were learning grammar stuff because I don't know, maybe it's just age that has helped me. But all of a sudden the things that I remember totally not understanding when I was learning them in English in high school, I'm like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Or I see that in action. Mm. Or, now I know what that word means. <laughs> yeah, of course, because you've seen them a thousand times more since uh, that time, right? It's, it's very much repetition that helps people improve. Um, yeah, it's yeah. one of the the slightly depressing things in life that you get better by doing a lot of hard work. Exactly. That's so true. Um, you know, I okay. think I, I read I read something actually yesterday about uh, Pablo Picasso and he I think he was did a sketch in a in a cafe on a, like a napkin and he sort of screwed it up and was about to throw it away. Uh, and some woman came over to him and said, uh, can I buy that off you? Uh, and he was like, yeah, that, that'll be 50,000 euros or whatever. She was like, what? But it only took you two minutes to do. And he was like, it's taken me 40 years to do that. Right. Exactly. Well, you know, that's just an interesting point. Self-editing aside, like just as a for newer writers or people that are only working on their first or second book, not to get frustrated because, you know, Stephen King didn't write his bestseller first time out the door. You know, it's like it takes a lot of work um, and repetition, as you said, and learning the writing school tools and and even as self-published authors like um, which I think most of the people here are, like it's really, really important to hone your craft and practice writing and get better at it and better at it and better at it. So, yeah, just to... <laughs> yeah, and it's about, it's about, I think for me, if you make practice exciting, then it's not practice, right? Mm. And that's why I think people always think, oh, it's so much easier to learn things when you're a child. I wish I'd got really good at tennis when I was a child. But they don't realize that, you know, children, they spend three hours a day every day playing tennis. Right. And they do it because it's fun, right? And right. it's a game for them. So they've actually done a huge amount of practice, but they didn't see it as practice. They saw it as fun. Right. So if you can take, you know, I mean, most people, most people who are writing, they do it because they enjoy writing, right? Um, obviously, there's some parts of it that they find laborious or, you know, difficult, so if you can focus on making those easier and and really you know concentrating on the bits that you enjoy then you know practice isn't practice it's fun and you're going to enjoy the process of getting better and then eventually you will be a, a really good writer and it will you know seem easy from then on hopefully that's awesome. Um I hate to interrupt our broadcast here for a second but I'm seeing a lot of questions ab about uh, sound and things like that. If you are having a hard time hearing or it's garbled by any way, and maybe somebody can write this in the chat, uh, try Chrome because everybody who's in Chrome steam, s seems to not be having any issues. Um, also, just a, a housekeeping thingy here. If you click on a question and ask a question, you're going to show up on the left side with the question out here. Um, if you just want to make a comment, like say hello or post something that you can hear or can't hear, then you write that in the chat box. And that's why uh, PC Field just asked why am I listed on the right and not the left like others on the chat side and in blue. That's why. Um, and you can ask questions. If you have a question, please write it in the actual question box because it's easier for me to get them. Uh, whereas if you post a question in the chat box, then there's so much activity happening in there that we may overlook them. Okay, so thank you. Sorry for that quick interruption there. Um, Sorry. Right. Okay. So do you think that this software is eventually going to replace the human editor or will we always need that human touch? I, I think that we will always need the human touch. Um, it's not designed to replace an editor. It's designed to make an editor's job, as I said, easier, right? That they can focus on the more important things like the, you know, uh, characterization and your tone of voice and uh, you know, potentially kind of like uh, plot holes, uh, inconsistencies in you know, the the time of your piece and things like that um, without having to, you know, focus on fixing lots of little typos. You know, I know for me, I'm constantly amazed at how many typos I make that you don't see 
because it's actually a word, right? So you, you mistype like from as form. And it's so easy to do when you're typing, um, but it's, they're so difficult to see uh, because your brain, you know, it's amazing. You only really see the, the first and last letter yeah. of any word and you use the context around it to determine what it is and you carry on. So yeah. unless you're really, really focusing, um, you know, and this is what professional copy editors have to spend a lot of time doing is, is focusing on not, not doing that. They kind of have to unlearn the way that they, they see text so that they can spot errors more easily. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not designed to replace an editor. It's designed to, so you get more value from an editor um, and hopefully that your manuscript that you're sending to your editor is a lot better. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of writers who like to use the, the tool Scrivener, which I'm sure you are very familiar with. Does, yes. uh, does pro writing aid integrate with Scrivener? Yes, I mean that. I think Scrivener is great when you want to create. A, you're creating a large project. Um, you know, you can't really work in Microsoft Office or Microsoft Word with you know, 100,000, 200,000, th even 300,000 word novel. You're just gonna want to cheat yourself. Um, so Scrivener is great for that, and it's great for keeping all of your research in in the the, the same place, so you've got easy access for it. Um, and one of our biggest request was an integration with Scrivener um, and you know I think creative writers are a very important part of our user base um, so we've made a lot of effort to make sure that we can make it easy for them to, to integrate with Scrivener. I think one of the things is that we could never hope to create the perfect editable writing environment for every type of writer. Right? But if you're writing a screenplay or a novel or a blog post we're not going to be able to to do that but what we can do is we can make sure that it's easy for you mm -hmm. to use pro writing aid wherever you're writing so we've got a, a desktop app that opens up scrivener projects opens up microsoft word opens up open office and soon final draft cool so i'm curious to know um what role you know we talked about the difference between having um, editors and and the you know the the artificial intelligence piece. So, what role does artificial intelligence play in how it how intuitive is the AI piece of pro writing aid? Uh, well, we use AI because language is unbelievably complex, right? And in, in any given sentence that you write, there's probably that's a unique sentence. Um, so trying to spot grammar mistakes is actually incredibly difficult. Um, it's one of those things that it's, you know, well, I always think people try and benchmark artificial intelligence against human performance. Uh -huh. um, but it turns out with grammar, a lot of humans perform quite badly. Uh, so you kind of have to say, well, actually, our benchmark needs to be, you know, a professionally trained uh, copy editor who knows all of these grammar rules. Um, so that makes it very difficult. Um, so we have to use a lot of artificial intelligence and neural networks in, in order to to spot these errors. Um, but on top of that, I think, you know, I'm a big believer in the benefits of computational creativity and the, right. the possibilities that are available there. Um, because I think, you know, the human mind is very good at logically thinking things through but quite often it's hard for us to think outside of a kind of what I call like a local valley of thought right um, and where creative thinking comes is you jumping out of your local valley of thought into the, an adjacent valley right uh, and that is what inspires creativity right um, so we're trying to do a lot of things to help people do that to you know think of you know the word that isn't immediately obvious um, but maybe more precise in terms of your meaning, um, because I think, well, every everyone has what we call an active vocabulary and a passive vocabulary. So your passive vocabulary is all of the words that you understand. If you hear somebody say it, then you understand it. And an active vocabulary is all of the words that you use. And most people's active vocabulary is a lot smaller than their passive vocabulary. When you're writing, I think if you just use your active vocabulary, then it can appear quite boring to people because you're using a very limited subset of, of language and you're not using the precisely correct words necessarily. Um, 
so we help people to kind of jump out of their active vocabulary and start to take words from their passive vocabulary. You know, words that everyone will still understand. I'm not talking about, you know, words like aliacious or something when you know, nobody really knows what that means. Um, yeah, you know, but you know, taking more precise words that you wouldn't, you know, you have to think maybe five or ten minutes or look in a thesaurus to think of the right word whereas with our tool the idea is that you know you can just double click on the word and you'll get some synonyms that actually fit the context yeah um, and you know you can do that really quickly throughout your whole document and say oh actually yeah that's a better word or this is a better word no i don't i like that one already um you can it allows you to play with language and experiment and yeah you know, without having to think uh, for five minutes of all of the kind of synonyms or look up it in the thesaurus or you know, and often thesauruses have you know far too many words that don't fit the correct context or the meaning that you want right yeah i really love that element of the tool actually most of my books are non-fiction but you'd be surprised how many times people repeat the same words and the same or you probably wouldn't be surprised I was surprised when I was doing some of the editing on how many times people repeat the same words and phrases just over and over and over. So I love, you know, that highlight how many times you've used it and then be able to just use that quick um, thesaurus tool as well. Um, I see all of your questions. We, we, we see them. We're not ignoring you, I promise. What I would like to do, though, is um, I put up the poll on how many people have used Pro Writing Aid. And at the beginning, it was in the um, heavy in the direction of the yeses, but now we've swung the other direction. So what I'd like to do is Chris has offered to do uh, a screen share and kind of give us a little bit of a... Um, uh, look inside of pro writing aid, if you will. So I'd like to go ahead and move into that. And then we will answer all the questions. Uh, if he doesn't answer them while he's showing us that if you're cool with that at this point. Yep. Let me just uh, swap over, yeah. turn off my video. I have to. Put on. Okay. So. Uh, So can you see the screen? I can. So this is our online editor. Um, and here you can uh, just upload your document. So you can upload most of the kind of common format, such as Microsoft Office and Open Office and things like that. Um, and you can use a sample here, or you can just paste in your text. Um, if you upload the document, then when you download it again, all of your formatting will be preserved, which is, is very useful. So you don't lose all of your italics and things like that. Um, so I'm just going to click on use a sample. Um, and you can see straight away, we start getting highlights. So it has sort of real time checking that's built in. Uh, if you want it, if you don't, you can just turn it off as well by clicking on that button. Um, so you can see that uh, here it gives you an explanation of why you're getting that. Um, if you want more detail, then you can go here. Um, you know, so immediately, if you kind of misuse words as well, you'll get definitions of the words um, and a more detailed uh, set of information. So you can quickly understand why it's suggesting it and and determine um, if it's correct. Uh, so you can see there's we've got grammar mistakes are in blue. Uh, there's some style ones, so you know people to use very everywhere. It's one of those words that has no meaning. Um, so we just suggest deleting it. Uh, here's things like a missing question mark on a on a question, um, a bit of uh, you know, punctuation. So that's the kind of real time, but a lot of people don't like uh, being nagged when they're writing, so you can turn it off. Uh, we A good place to start is always the summary report. Mm -hmm. um, so this kind of gives you an overview of a piece. So if you're like, right, I, I'm, I want to edit this this chapter. I don't really know where to start. Then I can see, you know, okay, well, I've got some overall scores here um, in terms of the spelling and style. It gives you some key actions. Um, so I can see I've got high glue index. Um, so it says, look at the sticky sentences section below for more specific guidance. Um, I can see basic stats on my uh, document in terms of the you know, the number of words, but also vocabulary, so different word families. 
Um, so this is when, for instance, you've used you know, the words with the same root. So like uh, walk, walked, walks, walking. Um, right. That's all, all one family. Yeah. Interesting things like your most used words, uh, like how dynamic your vocabulary is, uh, readability measures. Um, so depending on what you're writing, you might have a different kind of need for the reading, uh, the reading level if you're writing, you know, YA fiction, um, you might want to make it more accessible um, to younger children. Um, a breakdown by paragraph. Um, the overused words is one of my favorite things. Um, here we've taken a set of words that are commonly overused by people um, mm -hmm. uh, and we benchmarked it against published literature. Um, so, you, you know, for, for most creative writers, they overuse adverbs. Uh -huh. um, so here you can see uh, actually this is fine. Um, uh, so there's things like the sentence structure. I mean, one of the things that people don't realize is that uh, if you're writing a lot of sentences that are this, a similar length in a, in a row, it kind of produces this monotony in the mind of the reader. Um, ah. And similarly, if they've all got the same, uh, same syntax, you know, the same structure, um, it's amazing how many people write, you know, he did this, he did that, he did the other thing, right? For, you know, 10, 15, 20 sentences in a row that all start the same. But it could even be like, he did this, she did that, uh, they did this, we did that. Um, so varying your, your sentence lengths really helps to kind of, with an, the ebb and flow of your writing, you know, you can... Uh, engage your reader with like a few short, you know, sentences, and then suddenly you can throw in a longer sentence where they're you know, they're taken through it and it's expounding a a, a longer point, um, but then go back to you know less challenging, shorter shorter sentences. Um, so again, things like passive voice. I think passive voice is is something that people really struggle to either understand what it is or once they see it then they struggle to change it into active voice uh -huh. um, i mean it's interesting living in spain because yeah. in spain they hardly ever use the passive voice at all and it actually seems strange to to english speakers or so to me anyway that you, you set the sentences you have to change them around so i've actually become more aware of it oh, right? interesting. because they would they would never say i was robbed they would always say they robbed me yeah so yeah, so even they, I don't, they know don't know if that's a commonality is, between all English round. speakers or just Americans, the, the but Americans use the passive voice a lot. I used to get hammered on that in my English classes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we do it in the UK as well, so don't worry. Right. The, a common bond. So we, we, you can see, uh, you know, there's a lot of things in here and you can dig into it and pick out the, the things that are, um, you know, highlighted. So one of the things that was highlighted in here was the sticky oh, wow. sentences. So uh, you can see there's a report for sticky sentences. Um, so I can go in here and see, oh, seven sticky sentences found. Um, mm -hmm. Sticky sentences are a really interesting one. Um, if you think of kind of the keywords in a sentence, um, you could almost just take those keywords out and the sense of the sentence would probably still be there. Um, but what we like to do is join them together with lots of small words that have no sense or add very little to the, to the meaning of the sentence. Um, and what you see is if you actually extract a lot of those, then you, you're, the sense of the sentence remains, but it, it's half the length and the reader doesn't have to read so much. Um, I mean, this is an interesting one. When I was writing lots of research pieces, we were very constrained to have to get articles on a specific page count. So we actually spent probably the same amount of time. So I think it's really, really, really cool that when you hover on it, it gives writing. you suggestions on improving. So, and I'm wondering and it's quite an artificial how long, exercise sorry, if do, this is like total misdirection where you're going in. Really how long did it take you guys to populate because, all of you know, the like I look the at guidance every sentence in here? Say, what are the extraneous <laughs> words in here that I, I can remove? Uh, and then I do it. Um, so the sticky sentences, uh, sticky words or glue words are the, the words, the most common words like 
in you can see in the sentence in and out uh, b2 uh -huh. um yeah, they're actually listed here, um, which tend to not add very much meaning to the word, uh, to the sentence. Um, so right. I can probably reduce this sentence to uh, right. remove a lot of these and still keep the sense. Um, so it highlights all of those in my writing so I can quickly find where to kind of focus and get the most, um, you know, most for your time. Um, Yeah. <laughs> well, yes, quite a lot of time. I mean, there's a lot of things that we do. So a lot of the, um, if you look at the style report, a lot of the guidance uh -huh. there is the, the, the types of things that an, a professional editor would pick up. Um, so we have a team of copy editors who are creating these rules. Um, so that, you know, right. it's highlighted for you automatically. Um, so that when you send it to the copy editor, they don't have to do it. Um, Did it? You know, and a, a lot of it is, is great sure. for, for editing okay. companies as well, because often <laughs> one of the problems, if you have you know, 200 editors in a company, um, you don't have, uh, every editor has a slightly different yeah. view of what's good and bad, and you lose a yes. bit of the consistency between the, the different editors. Um, but if right. you've got all of these rules, already then it helps to improve the consistency of, of the product that you're getting uh, for your clients um, so those all appear in the style um uh, i think there's things like uh what else is my favorite repeats is a, a really good one yeah i think because this is a great example of where machines can do something much better than right. humans um you know, because it, at the end of the day, it would right. be really boring to go through all of your text and highlight, you know, do a count of every phrase uh, and, and then put it all together. Um, but a machine can do it in, in a few seconds. Um, and so right. then, oh yeah, sorry, I, I didn't press the button, so. Uh, so you can see it immediately comes up with all of your phrases. Uh, so you see, ah, oh, this time of day. Absolutely. And it's so, a machine, uh, so there's you not as much emotional earlier, connection you as think, if oh, a person wow, were to I've send really you. Wow, I've really used that phrase <laughs> an awful much lot. Read, to um, me, I think it's different. You know, it's it feels, so easy to do because it's in the top than, of your mind. Than someone reading my even work within the same sentence, I have you can a question be about the same phrase because you you just wrote it. So it's there. I see echoes. What are the difference between those three in particular? So. I think one of the things that I, I like to say about the tool is that, you know, a lot of the things you could do yourself, but it would take you okay. 10, 20, 30 times as long to do it yourself, right? You could go through uh, all of your writing and you could highlight every instance of the passive voice and then you could try and edit it. Or you can use the tool and it will go in a second and highlight every instance of the passive voice uh, and give you a suggestion of how to change it. Uh, and you can achieve, you know, in you know, 10 minutes what you it would take you a day to do if you did it yourself <laughs> yeah sure Sure. So uh, all repeats looks at the whole right. piece of text and says yeah, that's exactly how frequently what it, do things occur. Yeah. Um, the echoes funny how many looks times at the smaller say, context. Um, um, so uh, the idea oh, no, is that if, you, if you reuse them, I, you them within over a, over a very over, short space of time within um, anyway, three or four or, or five sentences, all, or however, it creates or, an echo you know, in somebody's the, mind. The transitions, especially, um, you just and see so them the more unusual the phrase, the more likely it is to create an echo. Now, to the point where I've read books and I've seen an unusual word on page, you know, five, mm -hmm. and then I've seen it again on page 50, and I'm like, oh, they've used that again. That's just strange. Um, but in in this case, right, it, it's just showing you, oh, I've used 
whatever phrase over and over again. So I'll just run that quickly to to demonstrate. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so here this has got 26 close repeats. So I can see, uh, for instance, this time of day, right? Uh, oh, right, right. I've used that here and I've used it here. And like, well, that's quite a specific phrase, uh, you know, for me at this time of day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. And it, it really, I think it's incredibly hard for you as the writer to see them. Um, you, you're almost blind to them because they're expressions you use all the time. But for somebody else, you know, if they see at this time and then at this time or this yeah. time of day, this time of day, you know, within two or three sentences, then suddenly they're like, oh, it really puts you off the writing. Um, so this is one of the, you know, the the great things. You can spend a lot of time going, oh, really? I've written that right. three times within two sentences. Um, so it's good. Yeah. Uh, so that's the difference between all repeats and the echoes. Echoes is a shorter context. And the overused um, is specific phrases that we've chosen. Um, so it's not necessarily the same phrase, but it's it's kind of syntactical constructs. Um, so, for instance, in creative writing, something that a lot of people do is they use ing words at the ends of their sentences too much. You know, so it's like walking down the street, Chris did this. You know, seeing a bus, he got on it. Uh, you know, they and you can actually see that you know, whole paragraphs. They're using this because they think, oh, it's a slightly different syntax, so I'm going to make my writing more interesting. Um, uh, and it think, does things like adverbs as well. So I think one of the things we say is adverbs are, are not always incorrect to use, um, but they're often bad to use. So you know, one or two is right. is not going to hurt, and, and you know, sometimes you need them. Um, we say there's different types of adverbs. And you see there's, for instance, adverbs of time, you know, like currently, frequently, um, mm -hmm. and they're actually essential to the meaning of the sentence. Um, the adverbs that are bad are the ones that are used to to prop up a weak verb. Um, you know, because when you're writing, you just say that you write down generally what you know. You're trying to get your ideas out there, your thoughts on the page. Um, you don't have time to think of the perfect word at that time. So you think of like the first verb that comes into your head. So that might be like walked, right? And then you think, oh, but I want you know to change it a bit. And the word quickly comes into your head because that's quite a common word as well. So you write, oh, he walked quickly across the room. Right. Which is fine. But then <laughs> actually a, a stronger verb would do much better there. It would be more precise. It would be more interesting for the reader. So you could say he rushed across the room, or he sprinted, or he charged, or right, or something like that. Uh, so you can see, you know, there's there's a lot of different tools in here. I think we we talked about the thesaurus report as well. Um, this is one that I particularly like, where it runs on all of your text, um, and for all of the nouns, verbs, adjectives, it kind of comes up with um, suggestions. <laughs> uh, that you could add or you could change. Um, yeah, so so instance, we are like getting a, lots here, of questions, and uh, I'm trying to answer some of them that I know like, the answers to as like I a, can. But ah, delicate, um, right? That's, first of all, yeah, not something I would have thought uh, of straight away. Mind, but actually, quite a delicate some of these questions, and nice. some, some of them you um, may be able to so answer. Sometimes by they, they won't always be able to speak to. But I, I yeah, want to let everybody is, know like that you that. can try um, a free trial and but, also you know, that's I'm what like that's why I like this, this report this offer live because um, 
for writing aid really is also think offering of 50% that, off actually, when all you see it of written, their it's, it's kind of um, works. licenses for um, us for a very short yeah, time. And so but when it's you go really to the kind page, of challenging you click you on say, the offer, oh, actually, is um, there a better word that I done, could use here? If you want to stick around um, and still listen to Chris go through yeah, these things, I think you, if you're you not have to take quite everything ready to purchase, you can get a free trial and they have a free version. Do you want to talk to that quickly first, like the different versions? It's easier to do because it's computer as well, right? How they can use them because we've got. You're not going to hurt its uh, feelings. A couple questions on like, you can you advice. use Grammarly at the same time um, or do you have to delete Grammarly if you don't use Word or Scrivener? Um, how can you use it? And I told them that you can just go right into the actual online portion of it and use it there, correct? Mm -hmm. Right. And um, Grammarly, you can, I use both of them. So you don't have to shut off Grammarly to use Pro Writing Aid. Um, and what is the biggest difference between Pro Writing Aid and Grammarly or some of the differences? <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Yes, so right. you can use it online, um, obviously on any computer, you just have to log in, um, you can use it uh, in Word, you can use it. Our desktop app, as I mentioned before. Yeah, I um, know for, for me, we've got a Chrome extension me, as well. Uh, sharing my own personal experience, um, like I like Grammarly because when I'm writing, for example, uh, so it, Facebook, it, the idea is to have it uh, available things like that. Like it, it, it jumps in and highlights. And I don't know if Pro Writing Aid does this as well, but I know it's like it, it'll jump in and catch mm. my uh, mis mistakes. But when I'm going to like yep. actually plug in. Uh, a, 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 an essay or um, uh, well, chapters for me, of books Grammarly or anything like that. I put it in, like in pro writing aid because I've found uh, that so it's, it's the, there, like you I just said, to, like to the overall big picture and, and the grammatical mistakes, structure um, and the, the whereas we focus to really on have those uh, cool so tools right there for me to be able to see writing, how sure many times I've used specific correct. words and and um, and walk me through what I'm doing wrong. I can't like I love the fact that we do have a lot of I walk away from an essay that Grammarly has. As well. Wow, not um, only was that, that now a way stronger essay, to, to but I just learned some things um, so that the next time I'm writing my next essay, it's going to be even better. Um, so for me, that's the biggest difference. Like, uh, is that you know you've got the one thing that's great for small things here and there; it'll catch that you misspelled you know the word in your tweet, and then you've got the one that's like truly, to me, helping you develop out and and um, and write better. Right. 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 Um, yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I think it's um, OK. So we then the see next question that is kind of you. similar on so those lines by is, buying the product, is, you should, is it platform specific you know, and um, if somebody's and running an, need, a Linux you know, operating system? I wouldn't say you need to use it less, she said but frequently, you, um, you writing can go software more in depth. Work on right? her you can start focusing is, on the do you know kind of any more technical issues. Um, as you get deeper and deeper into it, 
Um, so you'll find that you know maybe when you're starting, you're only using two or three of the reports. Oh, true. Um, but after <laughs> a while, get rid of that you're not issue. using those reports because you stopped making <laughs> so no, those it's not mistakes, specific. and then you can focus on okay. the other things. Um, um, you know, in the same way that you learn, Phyllis, I you learn see. Anything. Does pro writing like, aid you, pick you, up you start those with the errors? Basics I'm and, assuming you and ask you that question in response to something you can move that he to said, but now topics. I don't know what that was for. So if you can, we really see it as an educational tool. Come back to it. Okay. Grammarly and to a large extent, pro writing aid help by confirming accuracy of occasional. Spanish yeah, that you don't make a blunder in, in your English manuscript. Tweet That's an interesting question. Okay, cool. <laughs> Well, again, uh, yeah. because it's on. That's cool. We have an you can't version, do everything right um, out the gate, then right? That so. is available on on any operation. <laughs> but that's, that's nice. No. Yes. Right. Right. Yeah, I can only imagine how much time it would take to build all of that in. So, um, yes, exactly, exactly. Okay, this is a good one. I've been using Sylvana. Uh, this is a good I've question. Been using pro writing uh, aid indeed. for some time uh, now. It's fantastic, which I agree. Working so on that. It's, yes, it's an incredible uh, so, tool. Yeah. Her question I mean, is about uh, verb tenses. She's been doing it, it's some part of our tests is using wrong Spanish forms well. of uh, past tenses. But uh, we, she said we have not a, highlighting a that mistake and uh, wants version, to know why. But it's not widely available at, at the moment. No, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, but as, as you as you as you can imagine, and I think as you, you you said earlier, right, that creating all of this advice takes a long time. Um, so doing it for another language also takes a long time. So for a lot of applications, all you have to do is translate the user interface, and and you're good to go. Whereas with this product, there's a lot more to supporting other languages. Um, so. Yeah. Little by little. Right. Thank you. Uh -huh. Mhm. Mm uh, okay, that's a good question. I think this, again, as I mentioned earlier, grammar is incredibly difficult. Um, and one of the things we, I think you'll never ever get a grammar checker that gets all errors. Um, it's just impossible um, because of the, just the complexity of language. Um, but what we tend to do is we, we try and focus on the, uh -huh. the mistakes that people make. Um, so we we look at kind of uh, corpora of, of errors that have been made out in the wild, and then we tailor the algorithms to try and find those mistakes. Um, one yeah. of the problems is that there's an infinite it's number not, of mistakes that people can make. That's what um, I was about to ask you. If people are seeing yeah, so errors that aren't coming up, is there a way for them to uh, imagine to the things that you, you can do when you're distracted? Um, you just type a completely great. different word to the one that you you meant to do in it. It literally has, you know, no similarities in terms of the letters or awesome. whatever. Okay. Um, um, but you just typed it because. Can you, you describe about, quickly you know, a little bit about the different levels? So, so you have just, your um, different license levels. You have so the, the free version, and then you we have two or three different versions beyond that. Can we've you just let people know quickly before. what they get at, at um, different levels? But things if they're like trying to determine errors, where to come spelling errors, where you know, instead, I always write. Whenever I try and write strong, for some reason, I write string. Uh, you know, it's it's a very common thing that I do. It's not nothing to do with the fact that I don't understand grammar. It's just that I my, this is some issue with my fingers. Maybe those two keys are closer together or something. Um, so yes, I mean, 
feel free to send us the errors and we can uh, we'll have a look and see what we can do. Yep. Yeah, yeah, just right. just send it to our support team. Uh, you can find the details on the website. Mm -hmm. That's great. Great. Um, well, I would just like to say, if you're planning on using, uh, if you're planning on writing more, yeah, so, so we have the free version, book, and I think and we're very committed on writing to making years, a free version available. Um, um, get because we realize the that there's lifetime lots of license out there and get it today when it's fifty percent off. Because of tools, if you think you'll still um, be writing and editing, then we have a next year the premium or version, the year after, like you're going to have to continue writers, to purchase um, the license. And that, but today yeah, you can get a lifetime license for half of the normal price, and you never have to. Writers um, who require plagiarism checking, fee, we also which is have great. A, a and I will say that even in the time that I've been because using it, I've seen something you guys that everybody add, needs. Um, um, and so, upgrade you know, again, the program and we wanted to keep to add the prices to it, reasonable so for sure people. You will continue you to do that and add that in new bells use, and whistles and things that our people are asking for and all of that. So, I would guess if you get a lifetime access, it's lifetime access to the newest, to the most updated version, correct? The process. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um Yes. Yes, and obviously because it's online, you don't even have to upgrade um, to get most of the the things. Um, we also make yeah, enhancements absolutely. to the, well, our desktop apps and Word add-ins. Oh, well, um, you're in Spain right now, so you, you may be able computers. to answer this so, one, or I'm said, sure you we're work with other people in the industry. But the more question more tools um, to, was to asked: Do you know of a sim similar writing. program to pro um, writing? And as technology aid improves, Spanish I'm sure writing. that uh, what we can do will also. Uh, increase do you have that i'm very excited about the future oh i'm sorry because it's, it's, it's fun so right like really interesting awesome. how like, um the problem of how to to help people write better um yeah because it's i i'm always find myself analyzing things that i'm reading and say why am i enjoying this like what what is it you know what is it that right. makes this piece of writing jump off the page and into my brain and inspire me, you know, or excite me. And uh, you know, then taking that kind of reverse engineering and helping yeah, other people absolutely. achieve it. Well, and another yeah, shout out yeah, that I want to give to problem, you guys is that you have a robust uh, blog a fun, and a robust website to that has all kinds of extra um all kinds of extra information for people and help and guidance and ebooks. And I think I think people who get the um there's special bell like special uh ebooks and things like that that people with lifetime access get, or Espanol. lifetime license uh, uh get access are, to and all of those. Uh, well that's what um, I but you I know the, the, if you're having um, questions or need some extra support, no, 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 do it, make yeah. sure you check out their uh, blog and their webpage. And that yeah, kind so of goes that, into I mean, is, we've got a couple of questions really by uh, Leona here currently and she's um, needing some some writing help. She needs help with writing I think also yeah as a tool for helping people biography all a lot of, those of our things. users you offer those types of services. Do you have because, editors that work directly with you know, people? Yeah, uh, want to improve their writing as well. Okay. Um, and I think you know we're very committed to helping okay. people who are learning Spanish as well to, to improve. And I think that's a very exciting area. Right.
awesome. I mm -hmm. uh, we don't actually. Um, it's some, something that we're considering. Um, up until this point, we've we've tried to focus on on helping the yes. The and Lisa was telling you also accept guest submissions. So um, if you are so in the writing kind of or editing industry and want to write individual writing you feedback is, well, is kind of outside is of the scope of that. Um, but as um, you say, you know, we we have a big focus on producing right, content exactly. to help people. So well, then um, it does, it better, shouldn't uh, be like, uh, uh, as part of the premium for me then to say if anyone to, is looking six uh, for someone um, to help guide you in the direction of finding of, uh, writing support, or writing, publishing support, um, or help you through those process, things, they actually yeah, offer that through like Write Publish Cell. So don't hesitate to reach out to, to us. The editing for those types of services to how to publish um, i answered karen on this already but i'm just like going to make sure that, that, well. that you would agree with yeah. my answer she said yet, does prayer put writing put aid work well with non-fiction books or religious-based historical books and i told her that my experience was that grammar is grammar and, and improving writing is improving writing, writing and i've used um, so it across multiple genres and still subscribe um, and get the, the had great benefit from it because it's not genre specific is that what you would get those agree to yeah it's very meta writing about writing right Got it. Awesome. Okay, there's a question about um, uh, best practice for using large documents, like an 88,000 word novel. Um, large files apparently take a long time to process. Is it best to export to Word and use or do it straight from Scrivener for better pr performance? Or do you have... Yeah, and I would go slightly that? further. So we actually tailor it to different uh, writing styles. So for instance, uh, the overused Word report, we've, we've um, benchmarked it against text from different uh, genres. Um, so actually, for instance, uh, in academic writing, then use of the passive voice is much more acceptable than it is uh, for in, for instance, in create, creative or nonfiction. So the, the benchmark of the number of passive voices um, is raised. Um, so we actually do, do tailor it, uh, and some of the rules are only specific to certain genres. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it is designed to cool. work with different, different types of writing. Cool. Okay, speaking of uh, an issue, now this was two years ago, so I would imagine that you have um, made some uh, updates and all, but she said, Eileen says, I tried a free version two years ago and found that it, it um, didn't integrate I well with Word say that on if you, if you her Mac. She was trying to edit an entire novel written in Word with your Words, Scrivener so document. But it was useful um, and gave her some insights. I mean, I would always so she says, is do it, everything well, one, in, in Scrivener and then export as the last piece of the puzzle. would it be best to start puzzle, a project in Pro Writing um, Aid and then move it that's exactly what Scrivener is designed for, is working with very large documents and making that a lot easier. Um, we are bringing something into the desktop app, hopefully very, uh, sorry, into the, the web app very soon to make it a lot easier to work with these larger documents where they're, they'll be broken down for you um, and then you can run on either on the whole document on, or on a chunk of it. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, we do, we're, we're aware that we could be doing better, at, I think, with large documents um, and we're, we're hopefully going to be fixing that soon. Okay. Okay, great. And she also wants to know if she takes advantage, her license expired, if she does the upgrade today, does that just renew her existing license or does it start from scratch or how does that, I would guess it renews the existing, correct? Uh, 
Um, so word, I, unfortunately, word from Mac, the, it, it's not okay. just <laughs> She exactly said it expired as, in June, um, but it would be word, a year from today. Half a year from so it doesn't June. support the kind of complex. Okay, perfect. Uh, um, okay, a question on uh, plugins, using uh, the over, the can we Windows add to the does. overused list for um, things we so often overuse? We have to support it through our desktop app. That specifically so I'm not, I'm not looks sure at she used our one paragraph app. or one um, document, right? It's not overused it words in general. It's overused large, large words within um, And as I, that, but as I mentioned, writing, hopefully very correct. soon, uh, you'll be able to import it into our web editor and just work on the individual oh. chapters. And that should give a, a, a lot better um, ease of use. Aha, OK. Okay. Yes, so if you take a year uh, with the discount code, then it will just extend your current license from a year from the end date. Uh, so you, you don't lose anything by doing, doing it now. Uh, okay. Yes, it would be a year from today. Okay, great. Um, it's overused words with let's it. Let's see. Yeah, oh, so lots of questions. How are you doing right, on time? Do you need to wrap this right up right now, or can you answer a few more questions? And that people tend to overuse, and then we've calibrated okay. it against published yep. text. Okay, um, how um, so, many so we, we've kind of done um, do you the have work a computer limit for purchases? But, do you get but one that being license said, that can only be downloaded you can on actually computer, add your own. You so if you computers? know that you use a specific phrase a lot, you can add it to the overused Great. report, and then in the background, it calibrates it. it so the first okay, time you perfect. run it with a new overused word, um, it'll take a while to do it right, because so it's running against a large corpora. And that it's saying, you know, if I, how should we be using I, I the comparison word, information uh, with percentage know, of PWA users? Uh, a lot That's for some interesting reason. Question. But I know that I do it, and it's a bad habit. Then I can put it in, and it will calibrate it against published texts and say, point out where I've used it more than uh, it would be kind of normal in a published text. Uh -huh. I've got about 15 minutes left, if that's okay. okay. <laughs> okay, that's one way to look at it. <laughs> Again, yeah, you can put it on multiple computers, so it's a per user license. Right. So as long as as long as it's just you, then that's fine. Um, yep. Yeah, um. Well. Again, uh, in this case, I think it's out of interest, right? So it's good for uh -huh. benchmarking where your level is at. Um, yeah, so it, you might say, oh, look, I'm getting better and better over time. Um, so I would say use it relatively to sh see how you've progressed. Yeah, so that is probably the best way, or to feel a bit smug because you're better than everyone else. <laughs> No, but, but as, as I say, right, the, we have a very wide range of users. Um, so everything from you know second language learners uh, to published authors. So I think it's, it's very difficult to say, you know, oh, I'm the best at you know yeah. within a certain area or or whatever. But if you say right, like it, say if you look at sort of the amount of vocabulary. Um, variety that you're using and in, in a yeah. certain piece it was you know, better than 40 percent of people but now it's better than 60 percent of people you can say actually well you know i'm getting better um, using a more varied vocabulary if that's your target um, 
you know, I always think as you're improving, it's best to kind of focus on a particular thing for a particular period of time because you know, you'll get the most benefit from that. Um, and often when you're going through a, like a longer right. novel, you might go through you know, two or three editing phases. And in each one of those, you you'll, will focus on a different area. Um, <laughs> so you kind of, you know, like if you go through and say, right, I'm going to fix all of my adverbs, you get into this mental state where you're like, I'm the king of adverb fixing. Um, and it becomes a lot easier. You know, if you've just done a hundred of them, then, you know, that, that first hundred might have taken you a couple of hours and the next hundred take you, you know, half an hour and then you're really on a roll. Uh, so I, I think, you know, rather than kind of context switching between different things, doing adverbs right. and then doing a bit of passive voice and then looking at your dialogue tags and then going back to some adverbs. Like I think whenever you're context switching, you're, you're wasting time because you're having to remember what you, you were doing, what you, you know, what it needs to do um, or what you need to do to, to do that. Um, so I think it's best to really focus on one area. Yeah, I, again, again, I like to draw parallels with tennis, but you know, when you're improving at tennis, I like to yeah. focus on, you know, maybe I'll focus on my serve for a month and then I'll really start to see how much it's improving, right? And then I'll focus on my, on my volleying and then my, okay. my um, forehand. Let's see. I'm uh, getting a lot of, one of the questions I think, about yeah, um, where people, people can really find struggle. the deal. There should be the something that shows that, you know, up on your screen that says great writers, offers. Because they struggle to see what the specific um, screen, skills in writing are. the bottom, like um, near where the question area really, and polls obvious, right? are. It's your forehand, it's your um, backhand. Some of them so has, has it across the top of there. Those are the skills and I just need to work on those skills to improve. quickly again so that with writing see at this offer. So many for, different for skills are very hard days, to, to um, verbalize from, from today. or kind of understand. So you want to make sure if you're highly considering this that you go or, ahead and you know, take advantage of it. Or, good for five yeah. days. Um, yeah, and like using I've also posted syntax, it in the comments what is as it well. That makes my writing um, not as good as somebody else's and what can I do right to get to right now, as good as click them. straight on over there. So um, hopefully one of the ideal things about using the tool is it starts to uh, show you that's what good the to areas know. are Great that you to can know. work so on. That's... Yeah, I, I can tell you hands down, like I have used it in editing multiple books and it has been such a useful tool to me. And the thing about writing and publishing blog posts or books or any kind of freelance writing or anything like that, even if you're looking at traditional publishing, before you send a manuscript to an agent, it needs to be tight. So if you, you know, haven't hired an editor yet, you can at least go through and do some great revisions through this, but everybody still needs an editor is my advice. But let me tell you, if you want to save a lot of time and a lot of money, I've seen the editing process go on for months because there was so much stuff that the writer could have cleaned up ahead of time that would have allowed the editor to de dive more into the developmental editing rather than the copy editing and yeah, you know, we, all we those also have a 14 things. day so money back guarantee if you, if you so are a serious writer you need a tool you, like you this it's not a slightly uncertain it's not a gimmick would like it's not a you know a one of those things that we're take that, that, that you're going to be like why did i buy that you will use this regularly um <laughs> Lisa says your editor should never be fixing your grammar errors. Um, so, okay. Um, yeah, I can't. La, 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 la. After you use pro writing aid on each chapter, is it a good idea to test your whole manuscript in PWA? Right. 
Right. Is it, I would say probably not because it's going to be a bit depressing because, you know, so, so you've got, well, no, you know, if, it's just pure mathematics, right? If you've got a, you know, you're doing chapter one of a 20 chapter novel <laughs> um, and you fix one chapter, then the maximum improvement you're ever going to get is 5%. So uh, it, there's no point in checking the whole document. I would say, you know, look at the, the chapter as a whole, say, right, I've gone from, you know, this glue index to this glue <laughs> index. That's fantastic. You know, I, I've reduced the number of adverbs by 50%. That's brilliant. Right. But if you looked at right. that it, it, over the whole great, uh, document, you'd say, well, I've actually point. reduced my number of adverbs by two and a half percent. And that's right, right. not really very good at all. <laughs> but it's a big deal. Um, so right. I would focus okay, on the chapters and then that are more you know, there's, there's just certain tools within stuff. the product Becky which is says designed she to be on, off on the, the feature that highlights the end, pronouns that begins and, and those are things like consistency. How do you turn that back on? Um, so there's different oh. things are different, important for different people, but it looks like things like uh, okay. So that's that's a really great next question. Then is there anything of, else? Of acronyms. Like so, um, there, there are a couple of things that if you turn the them off, you comma. can't turn them back on by yourself. Uh, is there? Is that uh, the only one? And he and... he actually emailed me. Uh, he recently uh, finished his book and uh, has got the first print run done. And he, he emailed me and said, "Chris, the consistency is Oxford commas. It must have saved me about three days." Just, just that, because <laughs> it, you know, and what it does is it goes through and it highlights Got everywhere it. where you've used okay. an Oxford comma or you haven't used an Oxford comma. <laughs> okay, um, good to know. Um, diff yeah, sometimes, sometimes, you know, it, that might, yeah, that might be completely well, anything like people, this would have to be, I would imagine. Really, um, does so we were talking about, about the, um, um, you know, uh, editing foreign words, but the question that Joan has is, does pro writing aid recognize foreign words in a text rather than just you seeing them as a misspelling? Mm -hmm. Wow, I, I, I have a hard time uh, at the imagining moment, you how that would be us. possible so just, without uh, having the entire and, and dictionary of other every other language. <laughs> right. Yeah, well, yes. Yeah. So if you accidentally disable rules, um, then you have to contact us at the moment. We're trying to work out the best way to to allow people to do it themselves. But the the issue is there's lots of rules and we need to kind of a, a plain right. English description that's easy for people to understand of every single rule. So Okay, we're working um, on it. a question was asked that I can answer super it's, quickly. It's, it's on the when you the click list. on the link it's and you go list, over so. the prices that you see are the fifty percent has already been applied. So normally uh, the lifetime access would be 210, I believe, and it's 105 on the special deal today. That's lifetime access without ever having to repay for the um, for the license. It's normally 60 for a one year license. It's 30 with this link and for the next five days, just to answer that quickly. Um, does pro writing aid? Yeah, well, well recognize as you say, Latin right, and phrases? often people are using uh, made up languages as well. Uh, uh, okay, so got it. That's kind yep. of beyond the scope. So we have some heuristics okay. for okay. different languages. Um, we have a lot of things where, for instance, common right. Latin phrases exactly. aren't flagged as common as spelling mistakes. Okay. Um, for um, someone who's not terribly tech savvy, we are, we are is there easily doing more. And there's more to, to do. Um, Okay, yes, it does work on Mac, and um, you can also use the desktop app on both on all computers, or you can use the online app. So that's answering that one. Okay, um, once done with the manuscript, how do you send it to an editor or agent, or does it word stay in Word? Asked yes, and answered. That's just you just have your uh, book. 
in well, the Word doc and then you email it to my, the, or the common at whatever format your editor yeah. wants it yeah. in. Correct? Yeah. Or is as, there a as way you to say right there, we'd have to have a dictionary of, of every single language and every single word um, within those yeah. languages. Um, Yep. Well, it, so we have a, a like a help website where lots of frequently asked questions are, are answered, um, so that you don't have to to contact support. But if you have specific questions that aren't addressed there, then you can also email our support team, and they they do a fantastic job of helping people. Perfect. All right, y'all. We, we, I appreciate your time so much. We've had you more than an hour and 15 minutes here. Um, this has been very, very, very useful. I hope to everyone on there, if you were watching this, you will get a, um, or weren't able to attend live, you will get this uh, replay. And I'm sure that Chris and his team are happy to answer more questions if you have them. Um, I appreciate all of the people who have been piping in in the comments saying it was such a well, great uh, investment. Well, so if you're using the online tool, just buy it, uh, then get you, it. You just export um, it, and there's it lots of, of social proof in the comments if you're Word looking document. for so if you <laughs> for Word any document, more validation. We store that Word document. I can tell you as a user, um, and then when you, um, the changes really, that you make, really, really we apply to that Word document. So then when you download um, it. In improving it's the same my writing, word and it has as drastically it saved the time when so, we send, send our books to your editor. editors um, and the cost. If you're using our desktop app, then so it just it's works so on the well worth the, on your the computer small and it, cost. And I thank uh, you for keeping it, it such a reasonable price range and as then well. You can send that to your editor. Um, especially with all the tools. Yes, I agree. Thank you again so much, Chris. This has been a great pleasure to partner with your your company, um, both through my summit and beyond. And I'm just very happy to be affiliated with you and brag. On Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, a, a, it's really great to hear all of this this feedback. Um, and you know, as I say, we're committed to helping people improve. For me, writing is the the mechanism of sharing great ideas. And the more great ideas there are in the world, the better the world will be. So, as, as much as we can do to to help that process is uh, what I want to do. on you guys and this product all the time so <laughs> my pleasure to be here all right thank you thanks a lot